Vote day, August 17th, the, only the third time since Confederation that Nova Scotians are going to the polls in August. You could make the argument that Liberal leader Ian Rankin would have liked to have been at the polls even sooner. COVID obviously got in the way of that. But as you say, here we are. The Tories, they've promised a costed complete platform later this week, but they've already put out reams of documents and plans related to health care. Well before the election, even before the pre-election period. Well, even before the new year, as a matter of fact. The NDP, meanwhile, whose costed four-year platform is going to come midway into the campaign, on Sunday gave us a 60-page vision document, which essentially outlines what they believe Nova Scotia would look like if they get to govern for the next 10 years. On the opposite end of the spectrum, a much more conservative, small c, approach from Ian Rankin and his Liberals, a very traditional slow rollout of their platform. In fact, so slow that uh, Mr. Rankin so far will not even tell us what the five key pillars of that platform will be. And what's interesting and what we'll be looking for in the weeks to come, uh, among other things, will be where the leaders are because that tends to tell you where a party needs either to shore up uh, support or kind of build momentum. Uh, the NDP think that they have gains uh, to make on Cape Breton Island. For the PCs, they've got to expand their support within Metro. And of course, uh, for the Liberals and Ian Rankin, they've got to keep seats that they, uh, they could count on, but now they've got a busload of uh, incumbents who are gone. Leaders like to go to the places that really need attention. And with 11 MLAs not re-offering for the Liberal Party, even though those seats may have traditionally been strong, you can't rely on veteran candidates to carry the weight on their own. They may need the help of the leader there to shore them up, which means he's going to have to do even more traveling, can't do perhaps quite as, as laser-focused planning as perhaps Tim Houston and Gary Burrow will do. And the Liberals are talking about the economy because they really want Nova Scotians to look forward and to look beyond the pandemic. We are in the midst of a pandemic election, the fifth uh, provincial election to be held during the pandemic. All five incumbents have done relatively well during pandemic elections. Well, they've either maintained their majority or in the case of two of them, took a minority and parlayed that into a majority. And so Ian Rankin, the Liberal leader, is certainly hoping that he can do just that. Lastly, the important thing will be to see how many people actually turn out for the vote. At a time when the province is mostly at the beach, uh, it'll be one of the things that uh, we'll be looking for in this campaign.